Welcome back to Tech SD. This is Berani's coming back to you guys today with the long awaited how to build a PC. So, today I'm going to be building a PC for you guys. It's going to be fully uncut. I'm going to be detailing everything I do and trying to show you the best camera angles possible and some of the little things to look out for as well. Now, every uh, something to keep in mind before we start this build is that every pretty much a lot of computer builds are going to be different. There's going to be either you've got an APU from AMD, which is a different socket, to a, say, an Intel. But that's not to worry because it's all pretty similar when it comes to installing. Just think of it as Lego, but with fancy circuits and traces everywhere. So it really isn't that difficult. Uh, everything does connect to one another. And it's, I'm gonna try and make this build as simple as possible for you guys today. And without further ado, let's begin. Now, the first thing is if you are prone to st statically shocking stuff, then I want you to go and buy yourself a static wristband. If you don't statically shock anything, then you will not probably, you won't need a, a static wristband. So anyway, let's get on with the build. So the first thing I've done here is put all the parts on the bench. So I want you guys to unbox all your parts for your build and put them on the table or wherever you wish to build it. And then I also I want you to take the case apart and take all the panels off your case and all the screws and you can put them, say, I put mine to the couch to the side here. So as you can see here, I've just put my side, two SATA cables, power cable and HDMI cable, also my screws and my panels are just sitting there. So they can go on last. Once I finish my whole build, I can put these back together. So let's get on with the build here. So the first part's the first part. And now you guys can do this in whichever order you wish to. So if you wish to install the power supply first, then you can. Uh, me on the, I like to usually put the CPU in and the RAM in and put the CPU cooler on first. Uh, it's just the way I like doing things. So let's do this uh, first, first things first. Let's put the CPU in. So the CPU will have an arrow, which you, can, you guys can see here. The arrow will go and match the arrow on the actual socket. So the arrow is pointing this way, the arrow is pointing this way. It just goes in like this. And then we just put this down and latch it in like that. That's finished. Now for the CPU cooler, this is, this can be a little bit tricky. I mean, if you have a really big CPU cooler or a water cooler, then you may wish to put the cooler on last. It is up to you guys. Uh, me, I've just got an eight, I've just got a stock cooler here, so this is going to be my um, this is going to be my uh, home theater PC. So nothing to worry about there. So I don't I can just put the cooler on now, and it shouldn't be a problem. Now, just as I'm installing this, I will just make sure that I'm doing it properly and getting everything in there. Now also, this is the part where you want to put some thermal paste on. This is just some Animax, um, just some stuff that I got with my CPU, aftermarket CPU cooler. Just a blob there. Uh, be careful not to drop it like I've done, but I'm in a bit of a rush, so I'm, <laughs> I'm actually doing it a bit um, sloppy. So be careful when you put, usually when you're putting thermal paste on, be a bit careful. I'm just pretty sloppy with this today. Um, I should actually, yeah, I'll get an alcohol wipe and wipe that off. So yeah, you're gonna come into complications as you uh, do your build, and that's not to worry. That's not to worry at all. And I did say I was gonna do this uncut for you guys, so I have drop some thermal paste on the motherboard. So alcohol wipes are very handy to um, clean up any mess on your, if you've got any sort of, you know, if you've dropped something or you've got some thermal paste in a place where you don't want it to be, uh, you can just take it off and it shouldn't be a problem. So alcohol wipes, they're very important. I always recommend having some of these around. So once you've got that ready to go, you can then put the CPU cooler on, which shouldn't be a problem. So this is, it goes in like this. Yeah. It feels cheap because it is cheap. Okay. So put that in like that. CPU cooler goes on. CPU cooler says, hello, I'm on. And then you say, cool CPU cooler. You are on. 
Okay. Now your CPU cooler should be on like that. Should be in nice and firm. Uh, I do recommend the spread method though. Uh, taking your time with thermal paste and doing the spread method. I'm just sort of um, sort of slapping it on here just because as this is going to be a home theater PC and I don't really care too much about overclocks on this. Uh, so the RAM, the next part is the RAM. We're going to put the RAM in. Now with the RAM, I want you guys to look at the how the socket is here. Um, you can see here there's a long part and a short part. Same with your RAM, there'll be a long part and a short part. So all you do is you put that in like that and sort of get it in there, get it ready, put your thumbs on both the edges uh, and just push it in like that. And you should hear those click in and it should be fine. Now, another thing with RAM is too, if your motherboard has four sockets of RAM, generally use the socket to the closest to the CPU and it should be in color code. So there should be black and blue. You wanna put your, or black and red or whatever, you wanna put your RAM in the channels that are matching colors. So there may be a gap in between. For instance, if this one's black and this one's red, this one's black, then you wanna put your RAM in slot one and three. So that's just, uh, it's called dual channel memory. So um, this one's only got two sockets, so it doesn't matter. Uh, my channel's, my RAM's gonna run in dual channel anyway. And yeah, that's, that, that's the first part done. So that's the motherboard with the RAM installed and the CPU cooler on, and it's ready to go in the case. So the next part I like to do now is I'll bring in this in for you guys. The next part I like to do here, so we're going fully uncut, baby, is we're going to bring the camera in here and we're gonna install the power supply. So, uh, power supplies are pretty straightforward to install. Uh, this one is a bottom mount power supply, so you may have a top mount power supply, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I want you guys now to put your power supply in like this, or however it goes in. It should be going in like this anyway. There's going to be cables and stuff, and goddamn, the microphone's getting in the way. Okay, so it goes in here like this. Um, I'm just going to manhandle it in here. So it should go in here, and it should line up, and then you should get your screws out here. And just be careful not to drop them everywhere, because you're going to need them for your build. So get your screws, it should have came with the power supply or the motherboard or the case. Uh, generally it comes with the case or your screws. Um, here's the four that I need. So these are the four screws for the power supply. And the power supply should um, match up to the holes here. So when you see all the holes match up, then you can start putting the screws in and screwing them off like so. Uh, magnetized screwdriver comes in handy. Just make sure you don't cross thread the screws or put them in on a diagonal. Make sure they're going straight. Um, 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 um. Yeah, this is the probably the most painful thing about installing a computer for me is just screws. They're so little and they're so fiddly. I usually hate putting screws in, but yeah. These ones are nice and big and easy to put in, so. Yeah, that one's gonna go in again. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'll pull it out a little bit. So you just install your power supply like there, like that. Okay. Power supply is in, and we are good to go. Okay, now when you screw screws off, the biggest thing you want to make sure you're doing is you're screwing them in reasonably tight. And by that, you're just like this. Until, until sort of your wrist meets resistance, then you can stop. So that's sort of meeting resistance there. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good now. And that one's pretty good. So power supply's in, ready to go. 
Uh, we'll zoom out for you guys a little bit so you can see it in there. Um, now all the cables, you can just get them out the way because the next part is going to involve us getting our case like here. And I want you guys now to pull the, the it, some cases don't have these. A lot of the newer cases coming out today don't even need these, but this since this case does, and since some of the cases that you guys have are going to need these screws, I want you to get these screws out here. They're like these hexagonal gold sort of screws here. So I'm going to need, I, I don't know how many I'm going to need, but I'm going to pull them all out and get them ready. Uh, so I've got eight of them here. And now what I want to do is, before I put them in, I just want to line up and see where I need to put them, as my motherboard actually has a lot of different holes here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I usually get my motherboard with cases like these, and I put it in like so and I just match up the holes. So motherboard's gonna go pretty much, I'll just move them down a little bit. Motherboard's gonna go here. See, motherboard's gonna go here. And now, I've got a hole here, one. I've got a hole here, two. I've got a hole here, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna need six screws. I'm gonna need six of these hexagonal screws and I'm gonna have to put them in here so you just remember where you need to put them in, and then you put them in. So you can do this a few times if you forget where you exactly need to put your screws in, but since I remembered, I can put these six screws in here, 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 and here. So this is gonna take a little while, but it should be, just remember, just take your time with this. You don't have to rush it, you don't have to, um, that one seems to have cross-threaded itself. This is this is not a brand new case, by the way, fellas. So this ain't a new case. God damn it! This ain't a new case. But it will work like one. So now that that's there, we've got the six screws in ready to go that match the six screws here on my motherboard. We can then put the motherboard in and get it ready. Now, if your motherboard did come with a bracket here, you can put that in here. So there might be a bracket that you can put in here. Uh, if you have one of them, put them in by all means. I don't have one as I lost it. So I won't unfortunately be putting it in. Uh, however, we do have now, we have to get out another six screws. So with our screws that came with the case, we can get out well, I've only, I think I've only actually got six of these screws. So I gotta get these screws now that plug into those hexagonal screws that we had before. So uh, it's, it's pretty simple. It's just, um, now this is where the magnetized screwdriver really comes in handy if you drop a screw, as it really starts to get uh, annoying at this stage. So what you wanna do is you wanna put in this one here, I usually just put the one in the bottom right corner in, and the top left corner in first. And that generally gives the, it stops the motherboard from shaking. So I just line that up. If you have washers as well, then try to put washers in as well. Try to put the washers on. But they generally, yeah, they should, I mean, if you have washers, yeah, put them on. I just don't have any, so. In my experience, it doesn't really matter. If your case is earthed anyway, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, here we go. So we're just putting those screws in there. Again, wrist tight. You see me tightening them here. I'm gonna wrist, just tighten them reasonably tight. Reasonably tight. Like Austin Powers. Reasonably tight. Yeah. So that's this one going in. Okay, I think this screw is actually um, the wrong size. 
Goddamn ghetto screw. Go in. Alright, I think it went in. Now this one's a bit of a pain up here in the top right depending on your case like you can see here my screwdriver actually isn't even instead of clipping that screw but yeah it's still going in nonetheless and this one should go in like so okay so there we have it motherboard in motherboard okay we're all good to go that part's done. Now, the next part we can do is take a step back, grab this drive bay out, and I have an SSD, so I'm gonna have to mount this SSD to this hard drive tray, and I'm gonna have to mount it this way since the power and the SATA connection are here. So I just, we're gonna take a step back here, uh, put that there, and just Grab two screws, because it's an SSD, it's actually got no moving parts. So I only really need to put two screws in here. On one on the diagonal here, and another on the other diagonal. So I'll just show you guys like that. This is actually a bit of a pain in the ass, so. Yeah, like screwing things will take you, for me it takes the longest amount of time because yeah, I, I have really rough hands, so delicate things like this always take time for me. Okay, so we've got that one in like that. Okay, now I'm using an SSD for this build. Uh, usually you probably have a mechanical hard drive. Uh, if you do, then that should go in even easier because most of these hard drive trays are three and a half inches wide. This is only two and a half inches wide, this SSD. So unfortunately, it needs to have a few screws. So I guess this case, you could say that this case I'm using today is semi-screwless. It's actually not fully screwless. So like that, we're just putting the SSD bay in. And another note is we will get our CD-ROM drive in as well, so. Yeah. Okay, this is the bit where I feel retarded because this is not. Okay. Okay, it's going in now. Hallelujah. Okay. So there's your SSD drive uh, ready to go. We again just put that on the right here, back in here. So that's done. That's our SSD ready to go. DVD drive up the top here. I'll focus in, I'll zoom in there. DVD drive is going to go up the top here. Since this is a screwless case, I can just take this off here and then I can put the DVD drive in like this. So pretty, very straightforward. It's also got screw holes as well. However, I generally only use my DVD drive um, for an OS install and then I take it out anyway. So uh, with this screwless thing, it's actually got things that's kind of, they're kind of like screws that clip in like screws and then you sort of lock them like that. And that's really quick. So that shouldn't be a problem. Now, the next part of the build is, so we're just about um, finished here with the actual sort of installing components. We're actually gonna get a sound card in. So since this is going to be a home theater PC for me, I'm actually gonna install a sound card. And also my graphics card. So you can go, you can do this in any order you want. You can install the graphics card first or the sound card first. I would probably install the sound card first. So I will take this thing off here so you can take these off and bend them off and get them out which I'm gonna do here there it is comes off and we just put the sound card in like this so hopefully you guys can see that grab the sound card put it into the PCI Express like this and it's in like that 
clearing that heat sink no problems and since this is actually a screwless on the rear here it's actually got a, like a, a screwless kind of um, support mechanism we can just use that for this uh, since the sound card is pretty oh, sorry since the sound card is pretty lightweight uh, that screwless thing there will actually hold it in place however for the gravis card we do not want to use since this is a big gravis card it's a GDX 670 so I'll let you guys have a look at that this graphics card is a monster, so we're not going to use the screwless design on the case. We're going to actually put two little screws in the side to secure the graphics card in. So here we go here, we'll just put the graphics card in like this. Okay. And when we just screw the graphics card off and secure that in with two screws. Uh, if you have a smaller graphics card that's really light, then you can use the screwless mechanism. It's up to you guys. But this is really um, basic and simple. Whew, God, that's a big graphics card, damn just trumps over this motherboard. This motherboard is a Socket FM1, and this is an A83800 series APU. But anyway, so there's the graphics card, there's the sound card installed. Now the next part you guys want to do, this is the fun part, is you want to start installing all the cables. So here we have the cables here. Uh, all the power cables can start going on. Now since this is a 650 watt power supply, it does have a lot of clutter, and it's not modular. So you want to grab your case here and run all these cables through the rear. So like this, um, get all your cables. You can now kind of run them through the rear here. Uh, this is a pain in the, a bit of a pain in the ass, this, this step. But so just be careful and make sure you don't actually break anything so when you're doing this. I'll try and show you guys what's going on here. Um, I'm just bringing these through the rear uh, like so. This goes my microphone. Now I'm not actually going to do cable management for you guys because that takes like probably 20 minutes. So, oh, damn, my microphone's clipping off. It's clipping off, man. My microphone's clipping off. Okay, it should be good now. So we've got the case here. We've got it ready like that. Now what we want to do here is basically start bringing the cables in through these sleeves here and plugging them into where we need them. So, all right, so I've pulled up a picture here for you guys because unfortunately my camera overheated and I didn't realize until right at the end. Uh, so this here is basically, you've got the ATX24 pin in white. Now that's a big power cable. It usually comes in a 20 plus four pin configuration and I thankfully I just was I just had enough cable length to run it through the back. Uh, if you don't have enough cable length, then don't be afraid to run it straight over the gravis card and straight into the board. Uh, so yeah, that's the first thing you want to connect. And when you connect these power cable uh, power cables, make sure the power's off. So yeah, that's just something to be mindful of. And also up the top left in red is the CPU eight pin. So this usually comes in two by four. Uh, pin configuration and they'll go right next to each other and they should slot straight in. I unfortunately didn't have enough length to run this through the rear. I had to run this straight over the graphics card as you'll see later. And then the next part is in green, in the green text with the arrow pointing is the PCI Express pins. Now these plug up to your graphics card and they usually come in 6 pin or 8 pin. Uh, if they come in an 8 pin configuration they usually come with a 6 plus 
two pin configuration. So as you can see here, mine actually requires two because it's a pretty high end graphics card and it uses a lot of power. So I actually have to plug a six pin and an eight pin into this. Uh, if you have a lower end graphics card, you can generally, they run off the motherboard's power. And uh, so don't be surprised if your graphics card doesn't have one of these PCI Express pins. It's nothing to worry about. Uh, most mid range cards generally only require one six pin. So um, that's just, yeah, something to be mindful of. So once you plug them in, they should be okay. Mine, thankfully, I was able to run this through the rear and plug it straight in as well. So I did have enough cable length there. Now the last part is the SATA power connectors. Now these are usually really thin and really elongated and they've got a little L. So these are unique uh, in their own right and they plug straight into, usually they plug into your um, hard drives or your DVD drives. Uh, so as we see here, my SSD, is the it needs one of these and also my DVD right up the top, that's gonna require one as well. So I've plugged one into that and one into, the, uh, one into my SSD and one into the DVD drive up the top. Now let's move on to the next stage where my camera um, started, yeah, well, I got footage working again, so let's move on. Okay, so now that I have the DVD drive installed with the SATA cable, I've got the SSD installed with the SATA cable, I can now begin to do the final stage, which is plugging up the actual SATA cables to the motherboard. So I just put that one in like that, it goes into the end here. It'll plug into the SATA port here. Um, so generally you want your SSD on the first SATA uh, port, which will be labeled SATA 1 or SATA 2. And that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna put my SATA cable into the SSD like that. Uh, not like that because I think, yeah, there we go. One in. Okay, and like that. Wait, this ain't going in, so I'm gonna put this one here and put this one here since I don't have any extra SATA cables. And this one's like a hook, hook shaped SATA cable. Okay, so there we go SATA cables in, DVD drives in. SATA cable is going to the DVD drive here, that's on SATA port 4, this is on SATA port 1. So this is on the first SATA port, it's going to my SSD. Things are good to go, we're almost all ready. The last part of the build now is, I'll try and show you guys, is to actually get these little cables hooked up, these little ones. Now these will go down the bottom of your motherboard generally, so I'll try and get you guys a good look in here. This is probably... In my opinion, this is one of the biggest pains in the asses of installing computers. So uh, you'll have all your power cables here. You got fan, looks like fan controllers, which I don't, I'm not gonna bother with. This is only a home theater PC. Uh, we got the HDD LED power switch, which is important and power LED and the reset switch. So these will all go in one thing here, which is this one here as it's got the power, it's got in real small writing, it's got the labels there. And the power LED is up the top, which is positive. And that's the green and the white is negative. So I'm gonna take it that the, from inferencing, from inferencing this one, I'm gonna take that the LED, I mean the black and the yet white are your negatives on the other switches as well. So let's, just put those in there like that. Okay, that's it. You can use tweezers if you want to. Um, I've, I've done this enough that I'm sort of used to it now. So power button is right next to it and the reset switch is in the corner. So I'm guessing it goes like that and the power switch goes like that. Okay, so the power switch goes in here. Your motherboard should come with a manual that lets you know which one goes to which. Um, I'm doing a little bit of guesswork, but it should be fine. Uh, and HDD LED. So it goes in there like that. Okay, there we go. So those are in there now. 
this is your USB front panel USB so that can just go to a USB um, port over here there's one over here it should be straight you can just match that one that's the corner and there's no corner there so I can just put that straight in but as you can see it's clipping my video card which is actually not good okay another USB just plug that straight in again like so okay and HD audio so there we go HD audio goes in here like this okay Yeah. There's the graphics cards in the way. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to get going, but that's it, guys. That's all finished. So there you have it. The computer build is all good and ready to go. Uh, cable management, I can do that as I as I recommend in all my other builds. Cable management, I recommend doing it later when you guys uh, know that your computer's working. Everything's working perfectly. For instance, if your power supply is faulty and you've done cable management. You have to pull all that cable management apart again. So, uh, cable management, we can save that for another day. If you guys want to see a cable management guide, I can do one with this PC. But here it is, here it's all finished, it's all good to go. Um, now, I just got to put the cases, all the panels back on. And that's pretty much it. Uh, finish off this PC. So, put them on the way they came on, like that. DVD drive works cool. Everything works pretty. Everything works pretty good. Everything feels pretty sturdy, and we are good to go. So you can whack these fans here. They can actually plug into the fan, the Molex cables that I had before. I'll just quickly run them through the back for you guys here. Um, yeah, this case and this power supply. Unfortunately, the length of the cables on this power supply. Uh, pretty short, which doesn't leave or well, doesn't let me um, have that good of cable management or allow me to have such a great option for doing good cable management. If you guys want to have good cable management, then you probably want to buy a better case than the one I'm using here. And you also probably will want to get a power supply that's modular as well. So anyway, this is this one finished. So I'm just plugging in the case fans here, if you guys can see that there. Okay, that's done. All right, put that side panel back on like that. Okay, put the other side panel on the rear back on. Um, so, like this, I'll show you guys here. It's going to be a bit of a bad fit because the cables are running out the rear, but it'll fit on nonetheless. Okay. Mm. Alright, let's see. <laughs> Ghetto cable management for you guys there. It's pretty bad, I mean, yeah, should, should do it. I just want to get finished and boot it up and make sure everything's okay. So when you first boot it up, uh, you want to go into BIOS and make sure that your DVD drive is priority boot. And so this PC is good to go. There you go, guys. That's a finished PC that's ready to boot. Uh, if you did like this guide, then please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, yeah, there's so I'll be I'm always here to help you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. This is just build a PC for a noob. It was completely uh, uncut, and so don't you know? Don't be afraid to take your time and look at the steps that I did and follow them. And you know, if you have problems like you saw me, I'm plugging cables in there. Sometimes they're annoying to get plugged in, but you know that's what happens when you build PCs. It's not to worry. So. You know, there's the uncut, full 
version of how to build a PC. So my baby, he ripped off these front panels here for the DVD drive, so this case has seen better days. And I will be coming back to you guys soon with how to get quick boot times, how to boot your PC up. A lot of people have been asking me how to boot up your PC fast. We're gonna have the budget builds coming out. Uh, everything's gonna be coming out for you guys soon. Uh, if you have any requests, let me know in the comment section below or send me a PM. I'm always doing requests for you guys. That's what I'm here for. Here's the PC ready to go. This is my home theater PC. Um, I, I'm actually gonna take that graphics card out because my GDX 670 is still my main graphics card for gaming on my other PC. But anyway guys, there you have it. That's how to build a PC. And yeah, took about half an hour, probably a bit longer, but not to worry. So once the computer's all built, all you have to do is press the power button and your computer should turn on. And I want you guys to go into the BIOS. So once you start it up here, you just hit the delete key on your keyboard and you want to enter the BIOS. So I'll get, I'll zoom in for you guys here. You want to enter BIOS. So hopefully that goes in there. Yep. And so once we enter BIOS, all we have to do is change a setting because it usually it doesn't make a big difference but it's something that I like to do is I like to go to advanced storage configuration and just change this one to AHCI mode and then you can just um, also what, I, what else I like to do is I like to if you can see here you can also see my first uh, SATA port is, is um, my, my C drive or my SSD and then also you just go into boot and we select this time around, I'm going to be booting off the DVD drive first. So I want to boot off the DVD drive. And then exit, save changes and exit. And that's it. Uh, I, almost, I also might play around with this. Um, I'll just play around with this too. And I'm going to have maybe an overclock tutorial for the AMD APU. Since I haven't really used it that much. But I'd like to sort of overclock it and tweak it. So we're going to boot from the CD. And that's it guys, that's about it. So you boot your, you boot your OS, uh, install your OS, and that's about it. So anyway guys, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment in the comment section below or PM me if it's urgent. And if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up as it took me a long time to do for you guys. And that's about it guys. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe to Tech Your City. That's if you like my videos and you wanna keep watching them. Uh, be greatly appreciated as I love helping you guys out. And I'll be coming back with a few more juicy videos for you guys soon. Anyway, peace out for now. Brand easy. Bye. Oh, and sorry, one last thing too. Uh, once your OS is installed, uh, you can change that boot priority back to your C drive or your SSD or your hard drive and then leave your D, um, your D drive or your CD-ROM burner, DVD burner last. So guys, that's the final tip. Just thought I'd share that. Anyway, bye.